The northeast of Nigeria is a fabulous country of an ending beauty. It has some of the finest landscapes in the country and forces vast and richly fertile agricultural land supported by multiple river systems. Within this mix is its rich diversity. The character and economic conditions of this ethnic and cultural diversity is defined in the main by their environment. The Northeast is a picture of rugged and hostile trains in especially parts of Taraba, Adamawa and Borno states. As a consequence, hundreds of communities are hard to reach and alienated on matters of development. In parts of Yobe and Borno, invasive desert environment moves out scores of people and takes over their settlements. Nigeria's Northeast is also emerging from the effects of over a decade of insurgency. It is an upheaval that created mass dislocation, loss of livelihoods and loved ones. Against the background of their peculiar situations, the six states in the Northeast identify with the programs of the Community and Social Development Project CSDP as a workable pathway to addressing their challenges of poverty and social infrastructure. This program is a partnership between the federal government and the World Bank and it is about building new natural resources and infrastructure or rehabilitating them. By design, the program targets poor and vulnerable communities in the Northeast and adapts a simple paradigm, the principle of bottom-up approach to development initiatives. The CSDP approach, which is centered on community-driven development, where the groups, the, poor, the, poor, uh, the vulnerable groups are the poor people in the communities, are the ones who conceive of their need and the resources is put, development resources is put, is put at their disposal and they go ahead to use it to meet their development need. This is unique. It is unique and that is the secret of the success of CSDP. In the implementation of CSDP, the federal government seeks and obtains financial assistance from the World Bank and lend it to participating states. It does so through the Federal Project Support Unit, FPSU, in actual fact, the head of the Federal Project Support Unit is identified as the National Coordinator, Community and Social Development Project. CSDP has a very organized structure, from the federal to the state, to the local government, and down to the community. And over 90% of our structure is institutionalized by law. We have legal backing. All our state's 30 participating state agencies are backed, are set up by law, passed by the State House of Assembly. So there, uh, there is legislation and there is funding support also, both from the state government and then as it is now from the World Bank. At the local government level, we have our local government review committee. They are also backed by edits, by law set up by the local government. CSDP in the Northeast is an objective reality, a conspicuously live endeavor, the realization of dreams of many communities who hitherto believed it won't happen. The program intervenes in eight sectors, water, health, education, and transportation among many. Again, as far as the Northeast is concerned, the very poor, the vulnerable, and the internally displaced persons are at the heart of the initiative. In Yobe State, several communities live with the genuine fear of losing their dwellings to the desert. Scores have in fact been forced out by the invasive desert with no alternative place to go. The people of Clark Manor in Yusupar local government area are part of those communities. They got the story of the kind of intervention CSDP in the state gives to the poor and the vulnerable. They formed their community association and apply through their local government office for a support to allow them build shelter belt to cover their northern plank. Their application skills through at the state office, who delay sent officers to interact with them and brief them on the procedures that are involved. Eventually, the community got the grant they have asked for after they paid 5% of the grant request. The community built a successful shelter belt of nim trees that effectively protect them from desert encroachment on their northern border. The people of Kulamani did not ask for a hospital, which they really don't have. They called for shelter belt. The shelter belt has been there for three years, and it has helped in creating a buffer 
from the invasive desert. It is making an impact and the people are happy. But then, there is more story to that. The shelter built in Clark Mani is a pleasant relief for the people. It does not only stop the desert on the plank, it adds color to every land of invasive desert that once offered them no hope. The story of it, however, is that Clark Manor is a community in a full desert cycle. At the Kwaba Bay Northern Plank, they are faced by multiple incursions of the same nature from other fronts. The good news for the community is that they are eligible to still apply for another round of grant. The government is coming up with a Marshall Plan to tackle the issue of desert encroachment. The little we can do for poor communities that are already residing in such places, we have to do it and then we do it, I mean, urgently. So these people are qualified for support and we are ready uh, through our city agency to give the support anytime. You see, the, the, the beauty of what is happening now, no matter how much the World Bank brings, no matter how much in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, it will still not be enough to respond to the quantum of need and the volume of application that is coming now. So government should begin to look inwards also a little bit more. CSDP support program is noble. There is yet more character in their nobility in the way they facilitate the reintegration and resettlement of internally displaced persons. It is all in the concept of community housing, which implementation we saw in Adamawa and Yobi states. Kukarete Anyobe is a small village community, some 30 kilometers from Damatu, the state capital. Not many people may assume that this rather sleepy settlement is host to over 1,000 internally displaced persons, poor souls that were moved out of their natural environment in Yobe and Borno by insurgency. They came here in bits and pieces and were all well received. This under the tree meeting is a reflection of the journey of the IDPs and how CSDP changed their lives. Individually, they all have moving stories of close shape escapes and struggles to live and adapt in an area totally new. Essentially, however, Kukareta opened doors for them when they most need a way out for their lives. They got an even more assuring and enduring way when they learned of CSDP's community housing and applied. They were conceded and upon payment of 5% of the total grant sum were given grant to build their own houses. In all our uh, discussions with them, community housing became the priority number one. Their reason is that, yes, they have been displaced, they have left their places, they have found themselves in these places. What they, where they are sitting, they use tent, they use the grasses, thatch, uh, roofings and the rest. Now they want a shelter over their head first and famous. So almost all their priorities are centered on community housing. Today, in Kukareta, eight IDP associations of 10 people each are proud owners of two bedroom houses complete with a kitchen and toilet and a space for expansion. Well, I have a peculiar story of Malan Gadu from Gidram in Gujiba local government area of Yobe state. In the year 2016, Boko Haram attacked his community. Virtually every member of that community had to vacate the place and find shelter somewhere. Malan Gadu came to this place. He settled. When he did, he had to manage life. He was able to escape with his wife and children and his bulls. But definitely, he had no means of livelihood. He had no shelter. And he is just hoping that intervention will come from heaven or from somewhere to make him survive. Today, Malangalo is a proud owner of a two-bedroom house. And he is living comfortably together with his wife. Not <laughs> the Yes. Well, Alan has a beautiful story to tell. He tells the story of how he has been able to escape. And he told the story of how CSDP intervention helped him to settle here and become the son of the soil. In fact, he is not thinking about going back to where he came from because he spills there is still some burning issues rising from that place. But that's not all. 
this man has all his family here. Only a month ago, he gave out his daughter in marriage to a community around this area. You talk of integration and resettlement. I think CSDP has helped him to achieve that. Kukareta is a classic example of the success of CSDP's community housing in the North East. Beneficiaries of the scheme are of both gender. Hawe Isa Umar is a beneficiary. She migrated from Kalabalige in Borno State. She told stories of how night attack in their Julbe community scattered members of her family. She arrived Kukareta alone after having stayed in five other places but couldn't find peace. The greatest revelation is in Yobe, where uh, we are not even able to, for a, for a long time now, given the security situations, we are not even able to pay uh, direct World Bank's implementation visits. But we go to the, we go to Bono, we go to Adamawa, we've been to Gombe, Taraba, Bauchi, at, on, on a regular basis. But Yobe team and the work there is exceptional. CSDP call any of their project in the North East Micro Project. This is because the maximum grant for any project is 10 million naira. Benefiting communities always pay 10% of approved grant or 5%. That is when dealing with the IDPs or vulnerable groups. Taraba State offers fresh perspective on the delivery of CSDP support projects. There was in particular the story of Sunkurum Gada, where CSDP in the state gave the community support in which they built their ever first primary school and a skill acquisition center. Sunkurum is a community of mountain dwellers. Nothing much about them was known until very recently. They are super hard to reach. It took our team six hours to reach on a motorcycle from a point in Sabangidan Duna. No crowd makes much success of a trip to Sunkurum other than motorcycles. There is no defined pathway to that place. Good judgment guides the trip. You go down a cliff in a second. By another, you are climbing up a steep hill. We had to cross rivers too. It is part of the challenges of going to Gada. That means kind of community development in Taraba State. That you have to cross river. It is a very rugged train like you have shown you. But then, obviously, it is more rugged when you know that you have to cross rivers and climb mountains and move almost 300 kilometers. Obviously, in the thick of rainy season, Shunkurum is cut out of the world. Not a single one of us wanted to cross any river on a motorcycle. Many took the water on foot. Several joined an old craft without a skilled pilot. Eventually, we arrived so cool late evening. There was no school in session then, but the community took us around the two blocks of two classrooms each, which they built with the assistance from the CSDP. They don't have graduates or secondary school leavers in this community, so when they heard about CSDP, naturally their priority was education. We have a custom here that uh, ladies are not allowed to go to school and even children were not allowed to go to school, they go to farm for farming. But when the CSDP came in with a very good structure, which is first in history for a site of the communities, they are happy to send their children to school. So we are very happy with the, the CSDP. Though the, the, the enrollment is, is higher than the, the classrooms, but uh, this has hurt enough for for the student to be comfortable how many communities are taking advantage of this structure that uh, we have six communities around this area that uh, the children come all over to come and, and, and school here the csdp grant allowed them to construct a skill acquisition center too where tailoring weaving and fashion classes are taught to hundreds of youth around the community last year 2019 we have graduated over 360 uh, uh, people who came and learned their handwork and uh, uh, by the grace of god this year we want to enroll more so that we can be able to be benefiting and presently we have our tailors and other workers that are working there permanently that uh, will be able to see that we sustain this uh, project our trip to Taraba was in the company of the National Coordinator of the Community and Social Development Project, CSDP, Dr. Al-Karim Obaji. He was in the motorcycle trip to Sunkurungada. He was in the trip to all the project sites visited in Taraba. In Sabangali, Sardona local government area, 
The National Coordinator observed how using local technology, the people there built a reservoir to harness spring water from a mountain top to serve the overall water needs of the township on a sustainable basis. When harnessed, the water is transferred to a giant overhead tank uphill. Prior to the community receiving grant from the CSDP to set out this craft, which is their priority, this is the main channel through which they find water. They share it with their livestock. Cholera and typhoid fever were not uncommon. There is a central point built as part of the CSDP grant where all community can come and collect water from. Any interested community member or household who feel they are going to uh, connect this water to their area, they are free to do so. For, for the CSDP, this is a central fishing point for all the community. They should come and face here. Okay, so tell me, for how long have you been using the water and how helpful has it been to you? Now we have used the water for, for the past four or five months because it started August. So it has helped in the community. The community are happy, everybody, you see them, you see how they are happy now. How was, how, how was the water situation like before this, before this intervention? The water situation was, the water was dilapidated at that here. And now you see this, this is a very pure water here. The water is nice and it has helped them. Now there is not this type of malaria and typhoid like before. Close by, the people of Masewa are celebrating a new bridge which they have longed for for several years. For over 100 years, this wooden bridge links over 20 communities to the world outside. Accident happens and the people are often shut out to the world. When it rains, and it rains heavy here, passage can be very difficult. If it collapses, it means that there will be no social and business activities between those 20 communities. This woman lost a son recently to this bridge. How she felt relieved that a replacement and more secure structure is now in place. He came over to our site. Then when he was coming back yes. and discovered that the, the bridge was halfway yes. taken away yes. by a float. Yes. So as he attempted crossing the road now, he just fell into the river. As he fell now, he damaged the rib. And he, when he was taken to the hospital now, that is how his life ended up. Now, now that this bridge has been replaced with another one, how do you feel? Kai, I feel very much happy. Because that's why we never knew that the, gov the government will remember us and come and do something good for us like this. Because there are so many people, many children going to school, even our businesses, all is across this side. All our, uh, going to church, going to mosque, going to the market, anywhere. Office, we cross on the bridge and then we go. Sometimes this rain, when it rains and it is overflowed, we will not be able to cross. Yeah, the process started when uh, one woman, uh, Madame Esther, came to my office weeping that uh, there's a makeshift bridge in her community that is killing people. That people come in the process of crossing, they will fall into the bridge, into the ground, on, uh, from the bridge, because it's made of woods. And uh, so, uh, sometimes they lost people in that bridge. So when I had a pathetic situation, I decided that, uh, okay, we will come to the community in order to ask them of their need and then intervene. That was how we found ourselves in Masawa community. The CSDP National Coordinator was in the trip to outreach with the major stakeholders to drum support for the program's concept of the people driving their development needs. And to hear on field feedback on the implementation of the project, he wants the stakeholders also to unite for the continuation of the project, which officially ends June. In Taraba, the coordinator visited the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, the Secretary to the State Government and the Deputy Governor. But there is no difference in their responses to what the project is doing differently in the state. If there's anything anybody can say, it's to say thank you CSDP. Sincerely speaking, I am not saying this because you are here. I am saying this because there is no any nuts and crannies in this state you will go that you will not see a signpost that this project is being handled by CSDP. Taraba State Government, as a government, we are beneficiaries of your programs. And this is one program that truly has taught the lives of the people from grassroots. Because 
um, I was talking with the GM sometime. I said, how can you, I mean, even imagining for you to give one million naira, for example, and they give you a project of 10 million. I mean, to me, it's a social benevolence. To me, it's a social benevolence. And to be candid with you, we have enjoyed and benefited enormously from your program. We are indeed proud to associate with CSDP. Adamawa State was one of the earliest states in the Northeast to join the programs of the CSDP. Their relationship spans 10 years or more. In that wise, their experience on how their communities maintain their micro projects can influence communities in other states who join the program late. We try to see that, we inform them the importance of sustaining these projects. We told them that this project belongs to them and that they should take it there. And then secondly, we went out for, we reached out to sister organizations for collaborations, for synergy, where we are like for now, for example, to uh, the end ship. The people at the Marcel call Bell a treaty in New London. It couldn't be anything less. This is a rural settlement in Fufura local government area of the state that 10 years ago was just so rural. In the usual process of a CSDP, they applied for grant to electrify their community. It happens for them. From then on, the people have increased in social and economic activities. The master stroke, however, is that a philanthropist took advantage of their electricity and built an industrial borehole for them. You talk of a multiplier effect on account of what CSDP has done differently for the people of Bell Treaty. And that is precisely what the national coordinator of the program is saying. That yes, there has to be a synergy, there has to be a cooperative where individuals, corporate organizations should partner with them so that as much as they provide facilities for people for their own benefit, they can as well obviously provide a multiplier effect so that the people can continue to benefit and of course the project can last longer. The multiplicity of challenges of rural communities, poor communities in Nigeria, demands that single interventions such as, such as you provide, supported them with electricity, supported them with water, will not be holistic enough to help them to alleviate the poverty in a very sustainable way. So they, they need to reach out to other partners, other uh, donor uh, partners, other government agencies that can also complement and come with additional service after the initial one done by CSDP is very, very key. And we are seeing a replication of that idea here now. After the provision of the electricity in this community, now somebody has come to give them a uh, boho, industrial boho, well, for animal and then human consumption. The New London maintains a comprehensive healthcare center too, on account of their relationship with the CSDP. The center is equipped with the adequate personnel who in fact have a staff quarters close by from the CSDP grant to allow them to settle with their family members. The primary health care center runs seven days a week. The people of the community told how they covered distances with their sick to sick Medicare before. It is all over now, except in exceptional cases. You talk of a new London. Community leaders and their subjects were ready with the kind words in all areas we visited in Adamawa for the contribution or for the support of the CSDP. But perhaps the biggest fan of the CSDP in Adamawa is the executive governor of the state himself, Omar Fintiri. We found the project of CSDA to be very laudable and uh, in consonance with the uh, development uh, uh, idea and projection of this government. Uh, the CSDA have benefited about 190 communities in Adamawa, cutting across 14 local government and critically uh, taking care of seven local governments that are affected by this insurgence. Madagali, Michika, Mubinod, Mubi South, uh, uh, Maiha, Hong and Gombe. So you can see that uh, by ratio, if you take the 190 communities that have benefited from the 447 micro uh, project which are cut across eight sectors of the economy, the health, water, rural electrification, agriculture, and uh, support for the vulnerables. Uh, it has really impacted really on our people 
and it deserves the support of this government uh, that we have also created a new ministry that will address these needs. So the CSDA project partly or wholly supported by World Bank and the federal government I think uh, has really addressed these needs and uh, the, the requirement of our people. How several communities in Adama maintain their micro project is an exciting insight on the CSDP package. A blind community association in Aquiam, Miss our local government area of Ochi State, are changing the thinking of disabled communities in the state and advancing the lives of people in the area even without disability. In the South local government area of Ojo State, the Community and Social Development Agency has changed the way the blind population in that community are living their lives. These are communities who are very migrant, going to different parts of this country begging to find livelihood. Now, the livelihood is right there at their own home. The Community and Social Development in Bauchi has built a center for them where it can educate their children, where their wives can learn skills. And in fact, there is a water supply system that will allow them not to only get water for their household chores, but they can sell it as well and find income. It is a brilliant intervention that is changing the way these blind community are doing their lives, and they are happy about it. It is Aquiam Blind Center in Bauchi. This blind association had a land of their own. They approached CSDP in Bauchi for a grant to build school for themselves and for their children and a skill acquisition center for their women. It is all well for this community now. The school is a reality. The blind members take lessons in modern schooling with the addition to lessons in Braille from these classes. Their children and even the children of the community members are served by the school. The greatest contribution of this intervention in Aquium is the fact that this blind population who used to migrate across states of the nation to beg are now harnessed and kept in one environment learning. Their children are attending classes too, instead of leading their parents in their travels of begging. Their women do no longer feel abandoned too. Their husbands are home and they are learning skills that support their economic standing. It is part of the package for this blind association that they have a water borehole too. The water not only serves their domestic needs, they also sell it to build on their income to sustain their projects. It is a beautiful picture of a blind population and their families in good spirit here and looking at the future with hope. <laughs> Bauchi State communities have over 350 macro projects which they built with the support from the CSDP. In some communities, other support organizations came to add to what CSDP has done. It was the case in Kapi Ia, in Kirpu local government area. These people have no access to it actually. A journey to the area entailed crossing deep sands and dried river channels. Despite their terrain, the community sought the support of the CSDP to have a hospital there. They have their hospital all right, and more than 10 neighboring communities are benefiting from it. Now, the people of Kapi Ia had hitherto not a health center that will take care of all their health needs. They do have it now courtesy of the intervention or the assistance of the CSDP in the state. Now, the beauty of the intervention is that while the structure is there, other support agencies came forward and put a structure for them, like there is a water system put forward for them by WASH. WASH is sought for water sanitation and hygiene. That means that there is a water supply that will help the patients in the hospital and as much as the patient, the community will benefit too. You talk of multiplier effect. Then wash, then Enship came too. Enship came with the support in subsidy, that is subsidizing the drugs that they take, which it provides, and provide them with the furniture for the clinic itself. 
taking advantage of the health center however water sanitation and hygiene wash another support agency came forward to hold a water borehole for them on the premises of the health center csdp is hinged on four components and component two of csdp is building capacity of stakeholders and partnership building and and uh, i mean component that means that funds have been allocated to each of these components i think about 10 million dollars has been allocated for promoting partnerships the record of partnership as it is is very robust there are so many uh, individuals donor partners even some uh, government agencies that are complementing adding complementary service to communities after CSDP intervention. This is, is widespread. The community are now having a clean source of drinking water and a higher ground for better living. Within all that, yet another support group, NSHIP, is intervening with the drugs at the health center in a sustainable way. CSDP officials in Bochi say there are over 300,000 CSDP supported projects across all the state, all completed and all in operation. You see, what I'm doing presently is just managing people's expectation. We have an avalanche of letter of expression that is coming from the communities. We always have politicians, traditional rulers, always coming to the office clamoring for one community or the other. So really, it's definitely a cause of concern. But uh, what we are doing is uh, we are sensitizing the government for the need for the government to come in with resources so that we continue doing what we've been doing before. To 2009, to date, we have uh, approved 473 micro projects, out of which more than 350 fully completed and are functional. And we have a few number of that are still ongoing. What even makes the projects to be so accepted by the general populace is the concept of the community-driven development, whereby you put the community at the driver's seat. In fact, almost it's a baby of this government, and it's the baby of everybody in the state. But not to join CSDP late. However, within the short period, the project has touched over 300 communities across the state. Borno is a special story. Years of insurgency created a wide development gap in many areas. Rebuilding is a development goal. While many communities displaced by insurgency return home with the attainment of relative fees, they return to depleted social economic infrastructure. In many cases, the returning population outrun available facilities. It was the case in Kaleri, in the outskirts of Midiguri, a densely populated community of returnees. It is the story of their school. This is a typical day in Kaleri primary and secondary schools in the outskirts of Meduguri. Now, the school is in session, but there are over five classrooms who are having their lessons outside. Apparently, there is no class to accommodate them. So, under scorching sun, biting cold, rain, sunshine, these children, these pupils must have their lessons outside, like you are witnessing in this place now. Now, that makes sense with so the intervention that is being made by a community and social development agency in Meduguri. Primary and secondary schooling in Kaleri is a real trial on available facilities, which include classroom blocks, class furniture and teachers. People who take their lessons under trees apart, even the classrooms are overflowing. Massively, the Kaleri community learned about the CSDP in the state and what it does differently to support poor and vulnerable communities. They applied for support to build two blocks of two classrooms and furniture. They received the grant and achieved their plan. They are the happier of it. The classrooms have already been put to use and lessons are going on. This is... This is... When... When... Money... Money... Oh... Oh... Classrooms are completed with the furniture. Yes. But we still see small, some children sitting down. What happened? Well, the population of the children is over, the class is overpopulated due to lack of spaces in the school. Okay. Yes. Despite the two additional classrooms? Yes, despite the two additional classrooms. If they say we have another additional classroom, you see the children supposed to be 30 or 40 in the classroom, but as of now they are over 50. So it hadn't been that if there is another classroom, they should have expanded. 
It is obvious the community can have to do with the more support, either from the same CSDP or other support organizations. Still, people receive instructions outside. The new classroom furniture are not enough. Some people still are on the floor. It must be said, however, that the two blocks of two classrooms the Kaleriu community built with the support from CSDP in Borno is a way forward. In Meduguri Municipal Council, the people of Maponi Mapusala are returnees too. The area is an extensive locality where thousands find home, but they are a sasty population. For the periods in their return, they had to cover fantastic distances to find water. Engagement with the CSDP in Borno State effectively solved their water problem and more. You cannot fathom the happiness of this community, not only with their water, but with the drainage facilities too. The people say their area flowed with every rains and dripped to their houses. The drainage addresses that problem. The slurs make it even stronger to allow even vehicles stands on them. The people of Maponi, Mapisala, in Meduguri Municipal Area Council are having the best of times. The intervention of the Community and Social Development Agency has seen them benefit from solar-powered borehole and of course a drainage facility with the slabs which is helping them to clear their mosquitoes, to clear their refuse and to allow them to move seamlessly according to their houses. The water supply, their intervention in various locations. In all points, people can access water. You talk of communities that are directly benefiting from the intervention of an agency. Now, this is a very seriously and densely populated area. Most of them internally displaced persons who have just returned and who are in dire need of social amenities to pick their lives again. So far, this intervention will help them see to the realization of some of the basic needs they must have missed, water and drainage facility. But the water is a dream come true. We have been suffering because of water in this area. So we are now, all of us are very, very much happy about it, that we have a borehole and we reticulate it to three different areas, that everybody is getting water. Now. So the whole community is served? The whole community is served. You mean the project has been completed and it's handed over to you, you are using it now? Yeah, the project has been completed, handed over to us, now we have been using it for a good one month now. Now tell me, you mean if I leave this place, if I come back tomorrow, I will still find this place working? Yeah, you, even if you come next year, you are going to find this place working because we are going to maintain it, it is our own property. Mena talks about reticulating the water to distant neighborhoods in the area and the sustainability plan they have mapped out. Every community in this area will going to contribute a 50 naira weekly in their household. So we're going to keep this money in the sustainability account. Then whenever we have any problem, we're going to use the money. And even if we wanted to extend it, when the money becomes more in our account, we're going to extend it to other areas. The story of how CSDP in Bonose gave Lapos community grants where they requested for electricity project is a master stroke. It was in Malay, still in the outskirts of Meduguri. This is a beggar's colony. For over a century of their settlement here, this community never had basic social amenities like school, water supply system, electricity, or regular hospital. Mole is a settlement of migrants, leprosy patients coming from all over Northeast to access care on their leprosy, where they settle used to be premises of the leprosy hospital, the hospital where they access care. They collected here gradually. As patients, when they arrive from distant places, they stay close to the hospital. In time, they are so large and a community, surviving on petty trading and agriculture. Today, they are such a big community, legitimate owners of the land they are in. In this place, all settlers are either lepers or descendants of lepers. So they contacted CSDP in Bonner State for electricity. After four months sensitization, the community got their grants, and today they have their electricity at work. You cannot see how happy they are. Stars. 
we came and saw that yes, this is one of the pro poor community that are most vulnerable that need the intervention of CSDP. So we came and uh, did them all the necessary uh, fiduciary processes, and then with the process we came out with their basic need, electricity. As you can see, the whole community that have lived for years without electricity uh, means very horrible for them because of the security and then because of the proximity to the fringes of the uh, the Sambisa forest and the rest. So they are they are vulnerable without electricity and the rest and there are no businesses they can run to have a kind of sense of livelihood so when we had that we said okay this is very good project so we financed the project they, then they carried they out decided the project. on electricity themselves they, they, decided, they on decided on themselves okay but i'm not seeing any school here yes uh, they said they have a school just uh, uh, outside of the clinic actually this is a hospital a facility built for the leprosy patients the beauty of this project is that it sets in motion chain of economic activities for this Lepa community. It is part of the package for the people of Malay that they have six tricycles to increase their income generation and maintain their structures. The tricycles are run by their children who crave for a job where none exists before. This perhaps explains how their women have found their boys when a team from the CSDP visit them. The presence of CSDP in Borno, like in many states we visited, was appreciated with the passion by all stakeholders. Talking about appreciating what the CSDP was doing with passion. In this area, I must commend the bank, the, the bank and its team, especially the TTL, for looking at that angle of security. They are, they are very much concerned about the security in Borno. So for us to reach out to those communities, uh, virtually we used uh, security operatives. We are very cordial. We have a very cordial relationship with the, with the military, the police, and other paramilitaries that do assist us to reach out to those communities. We cannot say those communities are inaccessible and then allow them to suffer in, 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 in poverty. So we access them. And for the, the, the protection of the projects there, uh, we have not so far had any issue of vandalization or have in, had any issue of maybe destruction of uh, our investment in those inaccessible, in quote, inaccessible. In Gombe State, we have been to several projects there and the communities we met are overly happy. The people of Galdimari in our local government area toil to link up with the world outside them, especially during rainy season. A stream creates a big buffer for them them and some 20 village communities around them. This is the only pathway they have to the world outside. After years of toil, they contacted CSDP in Gombe for support to build a mini bridge to connect them with the open society. They are endeavor paid off and it is a relief everywhere for all the communities in the area. We have about 906 community strong groups, micro projects we supported across the state and uh, they, are, they are caught across the eight sectors of our mandate. So there are a lot of landmarks, as I said, when we did the outcome study, we have seen the landmarks, we have seen the revelations, we have seen the testimonies of the communities, what they have, what they have seen and what they are enjoying from the micro projects they have been supported and that they, they implemented themselves. So by and large, we are, we are, we are, the project have, uh, to some extent, uh, surmounted the challenges we have faced during the implementation of the project. The CSDP supported a disabled association with grants where they built a skill acquisition center. We find people with the limitation in their legs who only beg to find livelihood, now living a life of prosperity and pride. Begging for them now is a distant memory. They are shoemakers now, weavers, tailors and owners of manifold other skill set jobs that guarantee them decent occupation and income. In Duku, in the company of the National Coordinator of CSDP, Dr. Alukarim Obaji, homage was paid to the Emir of Duku. Major stakeholders in the delivery of CSDP project have shown genuine satisfaction with the implementation of the program across the Northeast at the level of feedback they received and the monitoring they commissioned. For us, as representatives of the people, we have seen the benefits we have derived from all the projects they have executed, ranging from construction of feeder roads, construction of culverts, construction of boreholes, solar, 
and, and otherwise, uh, construction of schools, hospitals, dispensaries, and what have you. So they have done wonderfully well for us in Gombe State. And there is no, no local government or any Mung or cranny that you go to that will not find a project executed by CSDP in Gombe State. Among all the projects that they have carried in the, across the state, I've known them for years. So they are the only one that I know that they have really reached out to the grassroots. I've witnessed many of their projects that they have started and completed on time. They are always prompt and they are always committed to their words. We are always meeting with them and they are really working. There are issues that create anxiety for the people too, across the benefiting states. The fact that the project ends June 2020, they are worried that at exactly the time when every state recognizes how influential CSDP has been in changing their life, that it should not go. Well, let me correct the impression that the program will end in June. The program will not end in June. The program is a program of the state government, of the federal government, supported by the World Bank. The agencies that are implementing, particularly at state level, are agencies of state government established by law. The staff that are operating these projects in each of the states are staff engaged by the state government. So they will all be there after June. The agency will be there, it has its life documented in a law of the state. It will be there after June. What happens after June is that this round of financial support from the World Bank will come to a close. There has been several rounds of support. In fact, the project, as you know, is more than 10 years. So there has been rounds of financial support. The latest round of financial support will end in June. So ordinarily, we will expect that the way the project has been accepted, managed by the state government, they will continue to run it and they might ask the World Bank for further assistance in addition to their own resources. It's an appeal we we'll continue to make. We do not think that this June 2020 should be the end of CSDP. We expect that this project should be sustained and more resources committed from the federal government and from donor partners towards providing this development and meeting the needs of people at that level. Not just their social uh, and infrastructure need, but also some form of socioeconomic need, livelihood support need that can percolate and, and, and trickle down to the poor so that they'll have even resources to send children to school, have resources to attend uh, uh, the health centers beyond the base transfer and even the conditional cash transfer that we are currently getting from support from the World Bank, I mean from the federal government and of course World Bank and other support. If the project goes beyond June, there is hope for the hundreds of communities who applied to be supported by CSDP, but whose request is still pending. With some months of the Ecologia deadline zone, some communities stand a chance of still getting a project of their own in their community. Government has clearly stated this ambition. I want to sustain the gains of this program like CSDP and others. I want to build and scale on these gains. I want to lift 100 million people out of poverty. And I also want to do this with an overall uh, human capital development agenda. So the institution is being set up. The systems are being developed. The programs are out there, like CSDP. CSDP ends in June. What next for it? Our ambition is to continue on the gains, to scale. And then we are when we are consolidating on this gain and scaling, what is the implications for the government? The government is then to fund it. Even if the CSDP programs end June, the national coordinator CSDP through states and local government can adopt the CSDP model in delivering development programs to their people since it proves a workable paradigm he is not alone on this line though this paradigm has been on the board now for more than 10 years the paradigm of actually putting the resources in the hands of the poor to be on the driver's seat 
and manage the interventions by themselves and get the services for themselves over time, which is very strong in terms of ownership, very strong in terms of maintenance and all of that. It has been there for quite some time. I think it is high time that the state government begins to expose this paradigm to other sources of partnership. There are philanthropic organizations that can put their resources to a, in this same program as well. There are private sector organizations that want to do co corporate uh, relations and can put resources in this same structure. In fact, it is possible to coalesce many more of the interventions that government is doing on a uh, supply-driven perspective into this paradigm and make sure that the leadership, the ownership, the commitment of this service delivery is by the beneficiaries uh, themselves. Given our field experience, CSVP has proven to be a critical model that not only touches lives, but also changes them. It proves to be a versatile endeavor too, with visibility across all areas in the Northeast and commended everywhere. It is like an appreciative community member in Ngombe, next to government. CSDP has touched more lives in the Northeast.